internet friends, it's Christy from Paradise Lost in Books and welcome back to my channel. Today's video I wanted to share with you guys my top 10 favorite books, so let's get right to it. Number 10. Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. Um, When I first read this book, I was just blown away. It was sci-fi like I've never seen it done before. Basically, it's the story of this kid named Wade. Uh, in the future, he lives in this place where it's like virtual reality all the time. No one wants to deal with the outside world. Kind of makes me think of Wally, -E, which is scary because I feel like we're kind of heading towards a future like that. We're all just gonna be in our floating chairs with our virtual reality helmets on. Place. Yeah, making me sad. Let's move on. Wade um, participates in this virtual reality world where the creator of the game has left these Easter eggs as clues. No one's been able to crack them. They're all based in 80s pop culture. So Wade is part of like this group that does research on 80s pop culture and they're trying to break the clues. And uh, if you win, then you get like all this money and lots of great stuff and it makes your life great and Wade's life sucks a lot so he really wants to win and he cracks the first clue and it gets crazy. There's all kinds of political corruption, big corporations trying to get in on it and mess his crap up. It's very very good. It's great sci-fi. If you like sci-fi this is a great choice for you. So, can we just talk about how cool this cover is? Doesn't it just make you go like what the heck are those? Are those RVs on stilts? What the hell is going on here? That has nothing to do with video games. What is this? It's misleading. I love it. Number nine. It's kind of cheating a little bit, but it's the Percy Jackson series. <laughs> this is definitely more than one book, but that's okay because it's one series, and so that counts as one number. Percy Jackson is the story of a kid who finds out that he's a demigod. Um, one of his parents is a Greek god, and I have always loved Greek mythology, so obviously I had to get in on this, even though I was kind of late to the party. I loved Percy's story um, about like his summer camp where he trains to be a demigod. I think Rick Riordan does a great job of making Greek mythology more modern. It's very, very smart. It's very funny, a little kiddish at times, which is why I kind of prefer the Heroes of Olympus series. I just thought that, you know, the original Percy Jackson would be a little bit more identifiable, but this series incorporates Roman mythology in with Percy and his whole Greek thing he's got going on, and it just proves how very intelligent Rick Riordan is and what a skilled writer he is. He weaves the Roman and the Greek together and makes one very seamless story. So if you like mythology, you should definitely check out Rick Riordan because he is amazing. Number eight. The Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Maas. This is story of an assassin named Selena Sardothian. She's the greatest assassin in the world until her master betrays her and she is thrown into a slave labor camp where she slaves away for a year until the prince of Otterlin, which is the country they live in, comes and saves her so that she can be his champion in a little battle thing they have going on at his castle. His dad is trying, the king, his dad the king, is trying to get a like right hand man type assassin and all of these criminals and killers from all over the world are going to be competing in it. That's very misleading because that's not really what the whole series is about. Um, that's what this book is about. But the series gets so in depth. You learn so much about Selena, you know, her life it includes magic. She discovers there's a lot of crazy, sketchy, magical stuff going on in the castle with the king. Starts out looking like it's gonna be a love triangle and you may be like, oh my god, why? But eh, give it a chance because I think that it will surprise you the direction it ends up going. So if you like high fantasy and badass female characters who aren't afraid to put on a dress and read a book and eat some chocolate every now and then, you should check out Throne of Glass. Number seven. 
Bite Oleander by Janet Finch. I don't think I've ever seen anyone talk about this book on booktube, which blows my mind because this book is so good and so relatable for younger, as in teenage aged readers. This is the story of a girl named Astrid. Her mother kills her boyfriend. Her boyfriend as in the mother's boyfriend, not Astrid's boyfriend. But she ends up going to jail for it and Astrid gets shunted into the foster care system. It'll really make you want to do some research on the foster care system in America because it's actually pretty true to life about how horrible the foster care system is. Astrid goes through some absolutely nightmarish situations. This is a great coming of age story. Uh, so much character development. Um, there's that parental relationship that gets explored. You know, it's truly amazing and Janet Finch is a great author. The movie is actually not a terrible adaptation so if you want to see the movie first and see if it's something you'd be interested in, I would actually recommend the movie as well. Mwah. Number six. Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I've got to say this series was a bit of a roller coaster for me. I started with the first book and I was like this is pretty good. I'm intrigued. Let's keep going. And then I got to the second book and I was like, what is this? Like, this is, this is really interesting and fascinating and holy crap, what in the world is going on right now? I, I am feeling all the things. And this book happened and I became feels. I became a trash can of feels. I, I don't even know what to do with myself. <laughs> I actually listened to the third book and the voice actors are really, really, really good. They do the voices and everything ex extremely well. I say they, it's one person. I'm also listening to the Kane Chronicles and that's two narrators, so I'm getting confused. But voice narrator for uh, the Rising series is phenomenal. But anyways, the, the actual series is about a society in the future that is very technologically advanced. Society is divided up into colors with golds being you know, rulers at the top and reds being the hard manual laborers at the very, very bottom of the ladder. Um, the main character Darrow is a red. His wife is hanged for, you know, speaking out against all the horrible things going on and this motivates Darrow to join up with the sons of Ares who turn him into a gold and send him to infiltrate the society in an effort to bring it down from the inside. Chris Brown is an amazing writer. Um, characters are all very rich, very well developed. They feel very distinct. There's not any character where I'm like, I've seen you before, you little cookie cutter, you. Hmm. Yeah, if you like sci-fi, anything like that, this is such a good series for you. Number five. Halfway there, guys. It is Cain and Abel by Jeffrey Archer. Never seen this book talked about on booktube either, but probably for different reasons. This is a historical fiction about two very different men. One is named William Cain, the other is named Abel Rosnovsky. William is born into a wealthy family in America. At first, I found his story pretty boring because he was a rich white boy who has everything handed to him. Yay! How fascinating. Whereas the other character, Abel, is born to a nameless woman in the woods in Poland and he has to fight and claw his way through horrible, horrible, horrible things happen to this poor kid. Get out of World War I happenings in Poland and get over to America where he struggles. Eventually their paths cross. We'll see where the, why their names are an illusion to Cain and Abel from the Bible, but it's very great thematic historical fiction. Um, there's some really great stuff in here. Some very violent, horrible things as well, but I was really surprised how I felt at the end of the book was totally different from how I thought I was going to feel at the end of the book. I love the characters. Uh, writing was not dry at all, considering that a lot of it had to do with politics and business and how these two made their money and stuff. You know, there's enough action and intrigue thrown in there that that stuff doesn't feel boring at all. So if you like historical fiction and, you know, multiple POV stories, this is such a good book. Check it out. Number four. 
Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This is another fantasy series. Same author as Throne of Glass for those of you who are keeping up. This one features a girl named Farah who is hunting in the woods to feed her family and she kills this huge wolf that turns out to be a fae or a fairy and then the ruler of a court in the land where the fairies live comes for retribution, drags her to their land, Prithian, and crazy things happen. There's beautifully written, super intense romance, amazing action, lots of mystery and intrigue. It felt very, very original. I did not feel like I had seen this story before, which I think is hard to do in this genre. A lot of people are trying to cash in on this genre and not all of them do it very well. But uh, the first half of the book is very different from the second half of the book. The second half is, you know, Farah fighting for her life against the big bad um, character. So it's very, very good. I fell in love with this book. Um, the sequel, A Court of Mist and Fury, really did me in though. I had the worst book hangover from this book. I could not stop reading it. Like, I would try and read under my desk <laughs> at school whenever I could because it was just so good I could not stop reading it. So if you like fantasy and female characters that are relatable because she is a badass but she's not one of those like oh my gosh you know I could never be like that kind of badasses you know she's only a badass because she really had to be. If those things sound interesting to you you have got to check out this series. Number three. The Lovely Bones by Alice Sabold. I read this book in middle school and it completely changed how I looked at the world. Um, I might have been a little too young to read something as heavy as this, but it's about a girl named Susie Salmon who is raped and murdered by her neighbor at the age of 14. Um, Susie is looking down from heaven watching her family, her friends, her community try and make sense of what's happened. She's trying to make sense of what happened too. Part of the story is not only her family processing the grief, but her processing her loss and the fact that she's never going to grow up. Um, I feel like it handles the topic of death and grief very deftly, very realistically, not all tied up in a pretty bow. We get to see a lot of different characters' reactions to her death, and I really love the author's take on heaven and how it's kind of a personalized experience, um, but that you still can move on to a greater afterlife, so to speak, once you let go of your tethers to the mortal world. If you're looking for something a little bit different, a little heavier, uh, emotionally speaking, this is such a good book, and like I said, it really altered my perception of life at a very young age. Number two. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Wow, this series. I know I'm kind of a little bit cliche, everyone loves The Hunger Games, but I don't care because it is worth loving. It is such a good series. I personally think that The Hunger Games handled the topic of politics and political corruption better than 1984. And that's coming from an English teacher fight me. Okay, but for those of you who maybe are not aware that this was a huge movie series and very popular book series, Hunger Games is about a girl named Katniss Everdeen who lives in a dystopian future where North America is divided up into 12 districts ruled by the capital and every year they pick two tributes from each district to come and fight in the Hunger Games which is a pageant slash reality TV show fight to the death um, as recompense for their actions during the war. It goes from being a very personalized story to being a very wide reaching story. I just think that Suzanne Collins truly mastered the art of telling a story from a teenager's point of view and it just feels so relatable even though it's in a future that hopefully none of us will ever have to deal with. But she tackles some really serious topics that I think are permeating our society today. I think this is a really important read for a lot of people. I think it'll really make you think about our society. It's not just entertainment, folks. So yes, if you haven't for some crazy reason read The Hunger Games, what are you doing? Go read The Hunger Games right now. 
stop watching this video and go watch The Hunger Games. Read The Hunger Games, not watch it. But do both, because I actually really like the movie adaptation of The Hunger Games. Number one. This shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. You probably know what's coming based on my age and my first video, but without further ado, my number one favorite book of all time is Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. Who's surprised? Show of hands. No one, no one didn't think so. I don't know how much I love Harry Potter. I bet you can't guess. Guess what I did to this book. God, my poor prisoner of Azkaban. And my first and second book look like this too, guys. It's tragic. But that's how much I love these books. I've read them so many times that they are literally falling apart. I've literally had these books, well, the first three for almost 20 years. So they're... They've been through it, guys. They've been in a lot of places and been read a lot of times. I think everyone generally knows the story of Harry Potter. I like Twilight. It's pretty ubiquitous in our society. But this book just opens your imagination. The series just made me love reading. Like, I just could not stop reading it. Every time a new book came out, I had to read it in one day. Uh, you know, I remember... So many of my childhood memories have to do with Harry Potter, my love for Harry Potter. I grew up with Harry, you know? The last book came out my senior year of high school, so that was really exciting for me. <laughs> Harry Potter has just always been there, always. And the world is so rich, the characters are so well developed, and even though the story is a common story, I often talk about Harry Potter when I teach Joseph Campbell's um, Hero's Journey concept. She makes it her own, you know, J.K. Rowling takes a common concept and turns it into something very rare and beautiful. And I'm holding up the third book because Prisoner of Azkaban is my favorite and Sirius Black is my husband. So that's it for me, guys. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you liked on this list. Was there anything um, that you would take off and add to this list on your personal top 10 favorites? If you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel i put out new videos every week until next time bye guys